This video will show you how to take full advantage of the UBC GIF codes within Geoscience Analyst by running an unconstrained inversion and visualizing the results in an integrated 3D environment. In this workspace, we have original airborne magnetics observation data and its uncertainty, a mesh created in Geoscience Analyst Pro, and a topography surface. With this data, we are ready to start an inversion using Mag3D through Pro Geophysics. From the Geophysics menu, create a GIF tools group, then drag the data into it. Since we are running a Mag3D inversion, we can leave the type as total field magnetic data. Now we can right click on the GIF tools group to create the magnetics inversion. We're going to create a folder. This is where all files will be exported to. Prior to the inversion, we can specify several options. Right click on Mag and V3D, Inversion, Edit Options. Select the required input data, the mesh, observed data, and topography data. We can use a distance or depth weighting, control wavelet parameters, add cell weight, edit the lower upper bounds along with other inversion options. Once satisfied with the inversion settings, we can apply and write files. Now all the input files needed have been exported to the inversion folder. We are now ready to run our inversion. Right click on Magin V3D, Inversion, Run Programs, All Inversion Programs. When we run Mag3D, it will go through the weighting file, compute a sensitivity matrix, and then start the inversion. While the inversion is running, we can track its progress. Right click on Magin V3D, Inversion, View Convergence Curves. The red dotted line is where it's trying to get to. The red line is the misfit, so how well do the iteration results reproduce the observed data? The blue is the model complexity. As you can see, where our model is least complex, there is a large data misfit. So to reproduce the data, we would need to change the model, making it more complex. Now that our inversion is done, we will load the results. Right click on Magin V3D, Inversion, Load Results, All Results. It has copied our files, including the inversion results. Note that since all the objects are copied, the inversion is completely reproducible. In the mesh, we have the iteration results. In the data, we have the actual data that was used. We also have the predicted data, the misfit, and the normalized misfit for every iteration. To quickly analyze the inversion results, we will look at the original magnetics data and scale it by the normalized misfit. We will begin by painting by the original data. In the data colors panel, change the color map function to linear. Sometimes points are a bit hard to see, so we will edit the visual parameters, changing the points to spheres, size 15. Select scales nodes by data. It will scale by our last iteration's normalized misfit, scale by 2.0, and scale by absolute value. Where there is a large sphere, we didn't really fit the data as well as we could have. If we select one of these large spheres and look at its value in the data table, we will see that the normalized misfit is within five standard deviations of what we set, so we're not really fitting the data. If we select a small sphere, we will see the normalized misfit is within 0 0.004 standard deviations, so we may be overfitting the data. Essentially, the ideal result would have equalized size spheres with normalized misfits close to one. Painting by the observed data helps us analyze further. If we haven't fit the data perfectly in the background area, it isn't too big a deal. On the other hand, we would like to fit the data better where there are anomalies. We can also investigate the recovered 3D model. We will turn on the mesh, display the last iteration result, and change the color map to linear. We can make the data smooth and move the block model sections to view the anomaly. As part of our results, the log file for our inversion is available in the file section of the data table panel. In the GIF tools metadata, we can see all the inversion options that were used, including the input data, weighting objects, reference models, upper bounds, lower bounds, sensitivity weighting, and working directories. 
If we click on the input data, for example, if we click on the mesh, the mesh used for the inversion will be highlighted in the objects panel. And there you have it, a Mac 3D inversion in five minutes. Thank you for watching.